Hello, everyone. Welcome again to BALAM Capacitation Building Webinars, where we are trying to explain uh, to you everything that's connected with lyrics. This is the chapter three. We have had two chapters before. Please check them in our website. This is chapter three of the BALAM, meaning Boosting European Lyrics via Entrepreneurial Monetization a project co-funded by the European Union. And I'm David Serres. I'm a music lawyer. I work as international and licensing mm -hmm. manager for Unison Rights. And we are here to deliver you the capacitation building webinars. The second chapter is about music publishing and lyrics. It is important for you to understand what is music publishing because we are not entering into more details about lyrics rights and everything that's involved if we don't understand the entirety of the landscape of music publishing. So in Europe, music publishing rights refer to the legal rights associated with the composition and lyrics of a musical work. So you have the composer, you have the lyricist and the publishing rights encompass those rights. Those are not neighboring rights or master rights. No, those are the rights of the composer and of the lyricist. And these rights are typically managed by music publishers who work on behalf of songwriters, composers, and lyricists to exploit their works and collect royalties. Music publishing rights in Europe are complex and involve multiple stakeholders, including songwriters, composers, lyricists, music publishers, and collecting societies, and also music administrators and heirs, etc., etc., etc. So music publishing rights are typically owned and managed by music publishers who work on behalf of songwriters, composers, and lyricists to exploit their works and collect royalties. Music publishers are responsible for promoting and marketing the works of their clients, clients meaning songwriters and or composers and lyricists, as well as negotiating the licenses for the users of their works in various contexts. Naturally, if the music publishers are part of a CMO or an IME that can, can negotiate the majority of the usages for them, those negotiations and the licenses will go to the collective, will go to the collective organization. Nevertheless, there are some type of licenses like sync licenses that normally are dealt by individually. In addition to music publishers, collecting societies, CMOs and IMEs, so collective management organizations and independent management entities, the differences are explained in Directive 2014-26, and it's a directive that opened the market to, let's call it private entities being allowed to do collective management practices as well. Then the IMEs were born. This is historical and it comes from the recommendation of 2009 and etc. Nevertheless, what's important for you to know is that both CMOs and IMEs, they can manage uh, exclusive rights on behalf of the right holders. And they also play a key role in managing publishing rights in Europe. Collecting societies are organizations that are responsible for collecting and distributing royalties on behalf of songwriters, composers, and lyricists and publishers. These societies typically collect royalties for mechanical rights and performance rights. They can also manage print rights and synchronization rights. The main types of music publishing rights in Europe include the mechanical rights. These are the rights to make and distribute copies of a musical work in various formats, such as CDs, downloads, and streaming services, Tether downloads, for instance, and also the performance or performing rights. And the rights include the right to perform a musical work, including its lyrics in public. And this includes live performances, broadcasting on TV, radio, and online streaming services called the so-called making available right. The main types of music uh, publishing rights also include the sync rights. And as I've told you, those are normal, normally not negotiated by a CMO or an IME on behalf of the publisher, but directly by the publisher. And those rights refer to the right to synchronize a musical work, including its lyrics, with visual media, such as TV shows, movies, and commercials. Also the print rights, and those are the rights to produce printed sheet music or lyrics for a musical work. 
what is the difference, and this is always something that comes up in all of our conferences, between publishing rights and master rights. So publishing rights and master rights or neighboring rights are two distinct types of rights in the industry. Publishing rights, they refer to the rights associated with the composition of a musical work, including the lyrics and melody. And these rights are typically owned as explained by the songwriter, composer, and or lyricist, and are usually administered by a music publisher. On the other hand, master rights, they refer to the rights associated with a specific recording of a musical work. And these rights are typically owned by the record label or the artist who made the recording. Today, with more and more indie artists and indie songwriters launching themselves in the market, it's normal that the same person or the same entity encompasses both publishing rights and master rights. And the importance of lyrics, as we've seen in our chapter two, it's vital to cross that with the importance of music publishers and lyrics in the music publishing sector. Because in Europe, lyrics are protected by copyright law and that gives the owner or the person or the entity who is managing those the exclusive right to reproduce, distribute and publicly perform the work. So the owner of the copywriting lyrics is usually the songwriter, but in some cases may be transferred to a music publisher. Music publisher are several times in Europe responsible for managing and licensing the rights to use the lyrics in various contexts and they are typically earning the revenue from lyrics through licensing fees and royalties which are paid by users of the lyrics, such as recording artists, broadcasters, digital platforms, advertisers, and CMOs and IMEs that collect also from those users, and lyric licensing companies such as Lyric Client, which is a partner also to the project. So the European Union has established several legal frameworks and regulations to ensure that the rights of copyright owners and users are protected and balanced. And that will be covered in our next chapter called Lyrics and Rights Part 1. It will be divided in two parts. Thank you for your time. If you want a mentoring session to cover any doubts that you may have regarding these webinars or the lyric processes in your company or you as an individual, please get in touch with the Boem project and we'll be happy to provide that to you. Thank you very much.